Welcome everybody. My name is Mina Jane and I'm the director of the Ashland Public Library. And I'm so thrilled to be here with Jane Ann Prince, one of my favorite writers, um, for our very first What's on Your TBR Pile series. So we couldn't think of a better author to get us started on this. With me is Laura Velamote, who from the Framingham Public Library, who is one of our partners in this um, scheme, I'll say. And we've been having a great time um, figuring out who to ask next. Um, <laughs> I'm also really pleased to be partnering with the Medway Public Library for this program. And um, when libraries come together, I just feel like we're super powerful. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that more, I'm sure. Um, I did wanna let you know we're recording this session. You can put questions in the Q&A and any chat in the, uh, any comments or uh, tech issues in the chat. Um, Lara's going to be our scribe today, so as Jane makes recommendations, she's going to be putting those titles in the chat, and I will be sending them out in a recap as well. Um, we are also on Facebook Live, and anybody who's watching us on Facebook can also ask questions from there. Um, I have a bunch of questions, so if you don't have any, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, because we're only here for about half an hour, I'm going to, I'm, I'm so excited. Jane Ann Krentz, New York Times bestselling author. You all know her, that's why you're here. Um, her new book is called Lightning in a Mirror. It comes out on the 18th, I believe. And um, it looks like it's behind you. So we can't wait to hear about that as well. So we're gonna get just started with, Jane, tell us a couple of books, two, three books that are on your TBR pile right now that you cannot wait to read. All right, well, first of all, I should show you the pile, right? Ooh, <laughs> that's the stack we're gonna have to rush through tonight. <laughs> Wait, is that all you got? <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the very tippy top is Victoria Thompson's City of Shadows. And this is part of her Counterfeit Lady series. And this is all about, this is set in um, very early um, 20th century New York, the Gilded Age kind of background. And Victoria does excellent research. So the story is telling is excellent, but the research is really enlightening. You're gonna learn something when you read her books. And City of Shadows is where I would start with for tonight. Um, what's the genre for that one? This would be, oh, sorry. I should make that clear. This is historical mysteries. Ooh. Um, the Lady Sleuth version, which has become very popular in the past few years. Um, Lady Sleuths in, in various historical settings solving crimes. And um, this is this is one, this is a good example of that genre, which is like I said, very super hot right now. Mm -hmm. They're not too gory. They're more, they're they're true mysteries in the sense that we're it's problem solving um, without a lot of blood and guts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Lady sleuths are always fun, Kelly says. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and so the another version of the Lady Sleuth, which is hot right now, is Romantic Suspense. And this book is by Rachel Grant. And the, the, the book is called Crash Site. Rachel is a trained archaeologist and her character, Fiona Carver, is an archaeologist. So the setting is, um, this is like the modern day Amelia Peabody, I guess you would, would say, for those of you who remember the... Um, um, oh, Elizabeth Peters, sorry, the Elizabeth Peters books from the old days. This is the new, sexier, more adventure, well, more action-oriented version of that. But the research, again, is excellent. As librarians, we always appreciate that added bonus. That's right, because you were a, a librarian in the past, and actually, I was going to say former librarian, but we don't let you out of the club. <laughs> no, once a librarian, it's kind of like being in the Marines, I think. It's like there are no ex-librarians. Um, I would also like to recommend Sandra Kitt's Winner Take All. Ooh. Sandra Kitt writes romance in a very sophisticated way, but also with a lot of family. Her stories always involve issues of family in the, in the romance and how it all works together. And, and those, are, those are at the heart of her stories. And in this case, it's also money. It's a <laughs> winner take all. Somebody wins the lottery. What could go wrong, right? I think that's sort of the um, the definition of genre fiction. What can go wrong? That's what everybody is looking to find out when they open a book. Um, the next one, okay, close your ears out there if you don't like erotica because not everybody does. It is its own thing. And this is a particularly good 
version of it, a fun version of it. It's called Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. Okay, so this is a classic um, Earth, Earth women captured by aliens and dumped on a planet of ice and barbarians. What could go wrong, right? It's very good natured. It's very cheerful. It's very, um, it's very warm hearted is kind of erotica, but it is very sexy. So be, be aware, you've been warned. <laughs> um, Nothing wrong with that. And then we zip right into what could possibly be wrong with a pandemic. Something we can all relate to. This is Kimri Martin's Doctors and Friends. Kimri, I know Kimri, she actually wrote this book before the pandemic. And then kind of had that madly updated as the pandemic kicked in just as she was finishing it. And it's about women, women doctors who were friends before the pandemic and things they go through, the emotional changes and everything that happens to them during the pandemic. Uh, it's not, not everybody's ready to read this kind of story yet because a lot of people would just as soon forget it. Um, but it ain't going away. And if you want to see how it feels from the medical side, this will give you some insight. She does books that focus on friendships. That is her core story. Women, friendships in general and women in particular. So um, Jane, can I just ask really quick, is there, do you know if there's any sort of like humor in that book? Because like something to lighten it up a little bit, especially with friendships, I always feel like there's that aspect. Yes, she is, she, she writes, a, she also writes a positive, optimistic, warm-hearted book. Um, it's not a joke story, I can't say that, but it's definitely got some humor and, um, but it is, it is, anybody who's on the planet right now is going to be able to identify with the, the strong emotions in it. So I wouldn't recommend it except for somebody who, who's genuinely curious about what it might be like going through it from the other side. Mm -hmm. I say the other side, meaning the medical side who got us through it for crying out loud. Um, getting us through it. Getting us through it. Yeah. Thank, thank them all. Um, I love romantic suspense. This is not romantic suspense. This is straight up suspense by an author whose reputation is in romantic suspense. Um, if that's not confusing enough, the title is Wrong Alibi by Christina Dodd. And in this one, her character, her female character is trying to dig herself out of a very deep hole in which um, she finds out at the beginning that she's working for a murderer. So this is straight up suspense. It's interesting, particularly because it's set in Alaska. So all, all the cold, all the dark in the winter <laughs> and the darkness of Alaska is, it make, makes this almost a Gothic novel, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. It's got that kind of dark omnipresent threat coming in from the inside sort of thing. So that's um, for, for straight up suspense, lovers I think this is a good bet. Can I say I read Christina Dodd as a romance writer so I find that really interesting that she switched over to uh, romantic suspense or it's just suspense? This one is straight suspense yes um, but there are tons of very successful suspense writers now who came out of romance. Mm -hmm. It seems to be a thing. Uh, a, a, I could, a lot of Sandra Brown, I mean, Tess Garretson, um, just a lot of writers from this, from romance landed naturally in suspense. It all seemed to work together. It's an interesting transition. I've always written romantic suspense. So I have a slightly different twist on the story because I do still love that romantic relationship at the heart of the story. But uh, there's no question about what a lot of romance writers have become very successful suspense writers. Mm -hmm. And we're almost done, don't worry. <laughs> oh, cool. up your whole hour. Um, this one is for anybody who loves rom-con. This is the woman who pretty much invented it. And <laughs> it's particularly the sports romance. And who knew that would become such a popular subgenre, sports romance. This is Susan Elizabeth Phillips and her latest, which is When Stars Collide. This is the diva and the quarterback. And, and as she says, Mozart meets Monday Night Football. <laughs> Again, what could go wrong? <laughs> Jane, very, you, very funny. Do you think that you have to read that that series in order? No, it's a long running series, and the books do stand independently. What'll what the advantage to reading all of them at one point or another is that you're going to recognize 
names and faces that characters but this is all about these two people so the characters in the background are not you're not gonna miss miss them if you didn't catch the book they happen to appear in mm -hmm. and last but not least although we could keep going um another medical suspense novel this has nothing to do with pandemics this is dead already by mike krentz does that ring a bell? Like, <laughs> does the name ring a bell? This Mike happens to be a cousin by marriage. He's a, my husband's cousin. And he spent years in the Navy and as an ER physician. And this is a set in an ER department. And it's got all that excitement, that, that drama, you know, that just nail biting drama that goes on in ER departments all the time. And it's a murder mystery in the ER department. So um, I recommend that for people who like particularly medical suspense, which is, I think, also its own subgenre. Well, that's, that's my stack. I think we got through them all, yeah. <laughs> so those are those are books you have not read yet? I have to say I read them. I, did. I didn't want to recommend <laughs> books I've never read. I don't. <laughs> I totally thought... makes sense. Totally makes sense. So um, I'm going to start in with my questions and people can ask theirs. I'm going to start off with questions about TBR and then I can get into more about your other books if other people have questions about them. So um, I want to know what book or author inspired you to become a writer? Nancy Drew. <laughs> <laughs> if I look back at my origin story, it would have to start with Nancy Drew. Um, and then later, um, science fiction old school science fiction, Andre Norton, Robert Heinlein, pe names people may not be so familiar with anymore, but I grew up on them. And um, uh, my perfect romance, perfect romantic suspense novel for me was always a futuristic setting. That was what I wanted. That was the first thing I ever wrote, didn't sell. Um, when I finally did write and sell it, it nearly killed my career. So, <laughs> but it is, it is, it is, my first love and I finally am making it work thanks to Berkeley Publishing and an editor Cindy Wong and Erin Galloway and Yasmin Hassan who have made, <laughs> made people bright read it. Thank you very much ladies. Um, and I write these under Jane Castle which probably makes you wonder why I ended up with three names. And the reason is because I managed to kill off the career the first time with a futuristic. Oh, <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Get it right the first time. In other words, if you want to keep your name. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, it's, I don't recommend having three names, but I've got them now. So kind of stuck with them. It works. And you know what you're picking, what you're getting when you pick up an Amanda Quick or a Jane Ann Castle, you know, Jane, Jane Castle. So I think it, it works for, for us readers. I think it does. And I'm as guilty as that of everybody else when very often readers are, want a specific world. They don't just want the voice. They want that voice in a specific world. And I totally get that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a big fan of Westerns, you know, and no matter how many writers I might like in another genre, or if they wrote a Western, I probably wouldn't read it just because I, but it's all about the world. It's not about the voice. But within that world, I want a particular voice. I'm very specific about that. So mm -hmm. what is the best book that made you cry? I don't read sad books. <laughs> I can't even, I, it would be, have to be a long time ago because I'm, I vet my own reading very carefully. I don't waste a lot of time on books I know that aren't going to make me feel good. Mm, that's interesting. Or, or teach me something. Mm -hmm. Those are the two areas that I, I read for. Okay. Um, well, what's the best book that you've read that taught you something? Um, the most recent one I can highly recommend is Entangled Lives by Merlin Sheldrake. Is that a great name or what? Sheldrake, yeah. Merlin Sheldrake. It's about mushrooms for crying out loud. And I never in a million years would have thought I had any, I don't even eat mushrooms. It's not even a, a food source that I think of a lot. Um, but I'm here to tell you, apparently mushrooms rule the planet and they do it from underground. And I learned all that from Entangled Lives. So I highly recommend it. It's, it's just a brilliant, uh, um, he's one of those science writers. He's, he's a scientist who can really write for 
the rest of us. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And and he just presents this incredible. It opens your eyes to what's going on in the forest underground that most of us don't. We walk across it and don't even pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. It's our whole world. Mm -hmm. What's the best book that you've read that made you laugh? Ah, well, most recently, I think it, it would probably be this one, The Stars Collide, yeah. I just had to bring that one back up. <laughs> uh, you, you, that was a, a planted. <laughs> exactly, it was like a mushroom. <laughs> okay, I fell um, for it, I fell for it. What was the best book that surprised you? Um, recently, uh, within the past year, I read a book called Sanatorium which was my introduction, I was slow getting there, but my introduction really into the new field of, I, I think they're calling it psychological suspense, but in my mind, in the minds of other authors I know who we've talked about it with, this is very much the new Gothic. And when you, Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce happens to be, it just happened to be the first book I read into that introduced me to this new Gothic, which is, really hot right now, very, very popular. And it always involves a remote isolated location, um, usually a female protagonist who's in jeopardy, danger from the inside, you know, not the outside threat, but danger from within a kind of a claustrophobic setting and an element of horror, madness, or am I going crazy kind of Mm -hmm. sensibility and it's a very hot market right now it's a very hot genre and the sanatorium which is a great title for that kind of story was was my entree into it it was very surprising because it was like oh here's the new gothic it didn't go away after all it's come back wow i'm gonna have to pick that up this sounds fascinating <laughs> <laughs> um what's the first book you remember reading well, the first book I remember reading was probably the one my mom read to me, which was Winnie the Pooh, the mm -hmm. Winnie the Pooh's books, yeah. But I have a clear memory of cuddled up to her while she read to us three kids, and that was Winnie the Pooh. So I guess it's kind of, I, I think of that as the first book, even though I was just looking over her shoulder. <laughs> she was doing the actual reading. <gasps> well, that works for me. Sing Home uh, from the Life of a Bear. <laughs> What's the first book? What's the book that you loved, but you couldn't believe wasn't better known? A hidden gem. Hmm. Oh, Anne McCaffrey's Rest Story. Ooh, I love Anne McCaffrey. <laughs> I bet you don't know Rest Story. That's how hidden gem it was. <laughs> Rest Story was a paperback novel that she published. Um, oh gosh, I read it when I was 19. I have no idea when it actually came out, but it was probably it was years ago. And it was the first futuristic romantic suspense novel that I had ever read. And it was after that, I knew that's what I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. I don't think she did any better with it for her career than I did with mine because she moved on to dragons <laughs> and, a, and a more of a fantasy setting. But Restory was, uh, yep, kidnapped by aliens. <laughs> what could go wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was a true romantic it was true romance in the sense that we know it today with a futuristic background. It was great. Okay. So it sounds to me like you have always sort of been into that uh, futuristic uh, genre and it, and finally were able to make it one of your own as well. I think so, yeah. I don't know why I gravitated towards it. I think it, I wasn't into fairy tales and dragons and castle stories, but I think the futuristic offered me that kind of fantasy but m without the rules because it was it wasn't tied to the rules of the past so mm -hmm. i think that's the appeal what is your favorite genre to read what i like to write romantic suspense okay <laughs> i was like um because some so many people say oh i i don't read what i write because that is to me that's escapism yeah, I like doing, I like reading good romantic suspense. Um, I just like that story. That's my core story. And I love it when somebody else does it in a way that pulls me in. Okay. So who are some of your favorite romantic suspense writers that are not on your TBR pile? Um, 
Well, they are on my TV. Oh. <laughs> well, that's the, maybe not the ones that you told us about. <laughs> well, I would have to say that the, the, the Lady Sleuth books that the subgenre that we kind of talked about earlier with Victoria Thompson, um, Annalie Huber, um, there's a, a lot of those names out there that the, the historical mystery invariably has a romantic I think Jane is frozen for a minute. <laughs> oh no, Jane, you're frozen. Oh, okay. oh, you're unfreezing. Okay, great. Fro frozen. I was, <laughs> <laughs> was going to get out my soft shoe. <laughs> what, yeah, what do we do? I do. Oh, gosh. Um, so anyhow, so I think that the um, Deanna Rayburn is doing an, an, an interesting version of the Lady Sleuth um, with her historical series that's going on right now. So Deanna Rayburn would be a good example of the kind of historical or it's a, it's a combination of romantic suspense and, and good history. All, mm -hmm. all ones that I like that combination very much. Oh, I will look into that. Um, I was thinking about that. There's a, sh like a, is it Belgravia? Is that similar to that? No. All right, I'm, I'm just making stuff up now. <laughs> um, who's on your auto buy list? Who do you not even think about buying? Um, you just do it. Yeah, probably, well, my friends. Because <laughs> if you don't buy your friends books, you're not going to be friends. So, <laughs> so, I, I, so I do buy Diana Rayburn, and I do buy Christina Dodd, and I do buy uh, Susan Elizabeth Phillips and Rachel Grant. And... Um, but on the other side of the coin, I also read fair amount of suspense. I like John Sanford, mm -hmm. the Verge of Flowers series. And I um, was a huge fan in, when I was a, growing up of uh, the original Dick Francis stories. I would, I would always have bought a Dick Francis without question. I'm a little more choosy now because there's simply because there's almost too much choice and and I'll find myself waiting until somebody else recommends it because as I said, it's an investment in not just money, but time. Mm -hmm. And I, I tend to rely more on recommendations now. Um, I enjoyed Megan Chance's um, last book. Oh God, Go on. it, was set, it was set on the, in, around this time of the San Francisco earthquake. Okay. Uh, drawing a blank here, but, uh, but maybe was, Laura, we will find it. Yeah, <laughs> Megan Chance is the author. Megan Chance. Megan Megan Chance. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank here. Ah, I hate that when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I know I kind of threw you with all these questions. Um, so I have one last question of mine. How many books are on your TBR pile right now? Not just like everywhere, eBooks, audio books, paper. Yeah, um, I probably got about six on order that are I'm waiting for them to arrive. Um, so I count that as my TBR pile because once it gets here, I'm going to read it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I placed an order in the past month or so for about six books that are due in, most of which are going to be in that, um, that kind of new Gothic style. Mm -hmm. That is something I'm really enjoying. Okay, awesome. Blended Ruin. Splendid Ruin, there's a librarian at work. Yes, <laughs> Splendid Ruin. Megan, forgive me if you watch this. I didn't forget, I didn't forget your name. I just forgot the name of the book. But um, Splendid, Splendid Ruin is, is interesting because it is a bit of a gothic. Woman gets uh, confined to a asylum, right? I mean, that's kind of a classic gothic setting. And um, then she goes through the earthquake and her whole life changes, so. It sounds amazing. Um, Kelly wants to know, do you read digitally or in audio or do you still prefer print? I still prefer print and I still prefer an actual book um, as opposed to the, the e-readers. I, e I think it's that I work all day on a computer. And so when I read, I want a different format. I want to be able to settle back with a book. And I noticed you have mostly hardcovers. Is that for any particular reason? I like hardcovers, yeah. Okay. I just, for one thing, the print's bigger. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> on a practical standpoint, um, I just like, 
I just like the larger book and everybody has form. It's interesting. Everybody likes stories, but everybody prefers different formats. And we're lucky to have a bunch of them these days. It's I think true. the advantage of the e-reader is clearly the font size. I mean, that's just a huge factor right there. Plus your storage, you can store. I mean, I, there's no reason, there's no wonder it's become so popular. Mm -hmm. and, and those of us who are still reading hardcovers, we wind up with a lot. What do you do with them? I mean, give them away is all you can do, really. Library book sales. Uh, you can't, you can't throw them away. You just can't throw them away. No, no, nope, nope. Libraries will take them. Um, <laughs> I got a question if you don't mind. Go ahead, Laura. So you read a lot of suspense. That's kind of your preferred genre. You write a lot of suspense. Often there's a whodunit component. Do you find that you're able to identify the perpetrator part of the way through because you experience it so often, or do you, is it always a mystery for you? Sometimes it'll pop out, um, but I don't look for it because I'm along for the ride. I don't. You know, I'll, I don't want it to be too obvious that I guess it ahead of time. Um, so I don't, but I don't work at it, if you know what I mean. It's like, I'm not trying to solve the crime ahead of, but for one thing, I know from writing a lot of mysteries, that very often the writer didn't know who was going to do it until the end either. <laughs> so, and then, and then, so you end up with a lot of candidates who could have been it and it would have been the right answer. So, so the, the, the dirty little secret of the mystery writing is that a lot of people didn't know, don't know what, who the bad guy is till they decide at the end. Then they go back in and put all the clues down. <laughs> don't tell anybody I said that. Uh, trade secret. This is trade, you know. trade secret. Yeah. That's right. Don't, when, try, don't try this at home. <laughs> um, so before we get to your new book, Mariella asked early on if you're planning on writing any Aman more Amanda Quick books, historical romance, mystical types. And I would like to know that too, because as you know, I discovered you with one of your very early rom uh, historical romances. Yeah. Well, right now, Amanda Quick, that world is the 1930s, which is a lot of fun for me at the, at, because for one thing, it's a new world. It, although I'm five books into it, I'm still discovering it. But the 1930s, golden... California story. It's that it's the Hollywood, the classic Hollywood glam backdrop. I am, I would like to emphasize, I am not doing serious um, 1930s Dust Bowl stuff. Okay. This is, that's not where I'm going. I'm playing to the myth of the 1930s. It's the myth that we saw or see in the movies. And it's just, and it works because it, there, it was in part true. It wasn't all myth. It was in part true. And the glamour and and the dirty underbelly, you know, of, of what was going on underneath um, makes for some really great mystery plots, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I like the I like the glamorous aura over the top. And well, it was just a time the time between the two world wars was a time of great change and fast moving, and it was also in spite of the depression and everything else that was going on, it was a huge, it was a hugely optimistic time. People really were excited about the future and convinced it was gonna get better and that science was going to make everything much better in our lives. And the optimism comes through even in the darkest times. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's, it makes me wanna like go back and read those then because I feel like I need that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so our, our attendees have had some really great recommendations as well, as you were talking about the Lady Sleuths with Victoria Speedwell series, Lady Julia Gray, um, yep. let's see, the uh, Burning Cove series. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be you, yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so we should all read all of this, of course. And somebody said something about Amanda Glass. Looking forward to Amanda Glass. Oh, Amanda Glass was me back in the day, and she's long gone. We won't be seeing her anymore. I don't need any more names. <laughs> okay. The only reason it became Amanda Glass was because I was had managed to kill off my Jane Ann Krenz career, and I needed a new name for the last book. And it was another futuristic, which was considered dead on arrival. So, yeah, that was a one. -off. <laughs> well, okay. Um, so now, those are our TBR questions. Let's talk about Lightning in a Mirror. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, well, just happen to have a copy here. 
And this is proof, living proof, that I can finish the series. I have been accused often enough that I've noticed it for not being able to ever finish or wind up a series. <laughs> and that's, in my, in my own defense, all I can say is that it's because I keep finding new stories to tell in that particular world. But in this case, I actually finished a trilogy. And this is the third book in the trilogy. And it concerns, it concerns the fallout gener three generations later of some secret government experiments that were conducted back in the last cent back in the late 20th century, right? And it turns out that the US government was seriously invested in paranormal research from about the 50s through the 70s. Lord only knows how much money it sunk into paranormal research. It was looking at everything from uh, what the psychic, you know, they wanted to find some way to access psychic talents and they spent a lot of money doing it. The USSR, the old USSR before the Russia broke up um, was also doing it. So it wasn't like it was a novelty. And it finally kind of faded away because it came to the public attention and everybody was saying to Congress, why are you financing a lot of the woo woo stuff? This doesn't seem to be a good, good way for the CIA and to be spending its money. But um, anyhow, the research was ongoing. It was huge. It was a lot of money in it. Who knows what was explored? And it just makes for a lot of great plots because now I'm into the current era with the the, the, fall, the descendants of the people who were affected by this experiment that went badly awry. And the first two books in the series are The Vanishing by Moi and Lightning in a Mirror. No, this is the third That's book. Right. <laughs> yeah. All the Colors of Night was the second book. Okay. So The Vanishing and All the Colors of Night. And then this one winds it up. However, I left a little door open at the back for this book because, because I can't stand to close off a good series that I've had a lot of fun with and I don't want to shut it down. So I left the door open if I ever want to go back. But yes, it's a trilogy and I finished it. <laughs> we love trilogies. Um, so you can buy signed books from Jane, including Lightning in a Mirror. It'll come to your house next week um, from Bank Score Books. I put the link in the chat and I put it on Facebook because signed books, as everybody knows, is total gold. And um, a Jane Ann Krentz signed book is platinum. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. well, so that's our, that's our time. I don't wanna like lie to you and say, I'm gonna take more than your half hour. So I so appreciate all of these recommendations. I feel like my TBR pile is, is, <laughs> has just basically fallen over. <laughs> well, congratulations on this programming. I think it's gonna be a hit. Um, I think this is a dynamite idea. I just, I very much encourage it. As I said, everybody's looking for a way to cut, cut through all the noise and get a list that suits their reading tastes. And every book is different. Every reader is different. That's right. And you have given us such a wide range of books. I feel like we, uh, you know, we can hit a lot of our, our attendees in many ways. Well, not physically, but you know what I mean? Their interests. <laughs> <laughs> because you're such a, you know, you're just reading so many different kinds of books. It's really fascinating to me. So I so appreciate having had your time and your, your brain to do this with. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank you. And have a wonderful night. Everybody who's been here with us, um, either on Zoom or on Facebook. Um, again, thank you for being here. I will send out a recap with all of the information. I want to thank Laura from Framingham Public Library and the Medway Library for partnering with us on this program. And, um, and look for us next month. We'll be back with another TBR. What's on your TBR pile? <laughs> Have a great night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much.